Today, we're going to talk about cannibalism. But first, we're going to talk about trees and fish and, and, and pop. According to legend, there was an economics professor who had four teenage sons. And every week, he would go out and buy them, like, ten bottles of pop. But the problem was, they would pillage those bottles immediately. They would just guzzle them down. And so this professor was spending more and more money just trying to keep pop in the refrigerator. Then, he had an idea. He went out and bought only four bottles of pop, and he wrote each son's name on one of those bottles. But the boys actually changed their behavior. They didn't guzzle that pop immediately anymore. In fact, they had some pop left over in their bottles at the end of the week. So why did simply putting names on the bottles change the boys' behavior? Well, the professor realized that they had been falling prey to something called the tragedy of the commons. When a resource is easily depleted, but access to it is unrestricted, then a vicious cycle sets in. Even if I want to save some for the future, I can't prevent other people from coming and taking it in the meantime. So you take as much as you can now before someone else gets it. But with everybody following that same logic, that resource gets pillaged immediately, rather than being used sustainably. And that's what was happening with the teenage brothers. Even if one of them wasn't thirsty, he knew that if he waited, his brothers would just drink all the pop. So they all drank as much pop as quickly as possible, so that they would get it before their brothers did. The professor dad totally changed the dynamic by assigning specific bottles to specific boys, so they didn't have to worry about their brothers coming in and drinking it, and they could save it for later. This is more than just a fun story of sibling rivalry. This is how we end up with environmental problems, like overfishing. Commercial fishing companies know perfectly well that they're pulling fish out of the ocean at a totally unsustainable rate. The problem is that even if one of those companies wanted to conserve fish for the future, those fish wouldn't be there because their competitors would have fished them out in the meantime. That's the idea behind the tragedy of the commons. If you don't take something now, someone else will. So everyone takes as much as they can, as quickly as they can. But as a result, of course, the fishing stocks are depleted way below sustainable levels. And that's bad for everyone, especially the fishermen. For the same reason, logging done on private lands is often much more sustainable than the logging done on public lands. On public lands, a logging company can't prevent their competitors from coming in and cutting those same trees. So even if they wanted to save some trees for the future, their competitors will come in and take them. So public lands are often clear-cut while private forests are often harvested sustainably. But the cannibalism! What about the cannibalism? In his 2005 book, Collapse, scientist Jared Diamond looks at Easter Island. Easter Island used to be covered with huge trees that the native Polynesians used for firewood, for construction materials, and most importantly, for these huge seagoing canoes. The Easter Islanders got something like 90% of their food supply from these offshore fisheries, and they needed those big seagoing canoes to get out to the fishing grounds. And each canoe would last a couple years, but then it would get waterlogged and have to be replaced. But over a couple hundred years, the Easter Islanders managed to cut down every single tree on the island. So once their canoes wore out, they couldn't go out fishing anymore. And they couldn't even escape from the island because they needed their seagoing canoes for that too. So the Easter Islanders starved, their population crashed by like 90%, and they resorted to cannibalism. In his book, Jared Diamond says, Think about that guy walking up to the last tree on the island with an axe. What was he thinking? Well, an economist understands exactly what was going on. Since the trees were available for anyone to cut, the Easter Islanders were trapped in a tragedy of the commons. That guy cutting the last tree on the island was thinking, if I don't cut this tree, somebody else will. So might as well be my family that eats for the next year. So the next time you hear about how we're depleting our natural resources, see if it's actually a tragedy of the commons. And who is Econ Guy? I'm Patrick Walsh. I'm an associate professor of economics at St. Michael's College near Burlington, Vermont.